Hey, Dr. Amy here. Everyone downplays the effects of radiation therapy, but let me tell you, radiation is no joke. In this video, I'm showing you 12 things that you absolutely need to know about radiation therapy, including the best products to keep your skin healthy. Watching this video is going to save you a lot of pain and frustration. Compared to chemo, everyone thinks that radiation is going to be a walk in the park. But this is where most cancer survivors go wrong. They completely underestimate radiation and they're left feeling beat up and worse than even when they were in chemo. So here's what you need to know to stay healthy, strong, and to get through radiation treatment. Starting with number one, the most common side effect of radiation is exhaustion. What most people experience is exhaustion. Being exposed to radiation every single day for up to a month takes its toll on the body. Heck, even just showing up to the hospital or treatment center every single day for a month is emotionally and physically draining, but then you have the effects of radiation on top of that. This is why the number one side effect that all cancer survivors experience during radiation is actually exhaustion. The good news is that there's some clear things that you can do to help support your body in healing and recovering from radiation. Doing these things can help you reclaim your energy so that you can actually live your life even during radiation treatment. To help reclaim your energy, the first thing that you're going to want to do is focus on nutrition. How you fuel your body during radiation has a direct impact on your energy. Start by downloading your free copy of 15 Cancer Recovery Recipes for Women. I'll put the link below so you can grab your free copy and get started ASAP. The first thing that you want to do is focus on more protein. At each of your meal, a quarter of your plate should be lean protein. This could be something like chicken breast, ground turkey, egg whites, or black beans. Most women that work with me in the Cancer Freedom Program are not getting enough protein. It's protein that helps our bodies heal. You need amino acids to help your body repair and heal. And that is exactly what you need during radiation treatment. Unfortunately, most of us are eating more carbohydrates during cancer treatment because carbohydrates are comfort food. Crackers, toast, these are things we eat when we don't feel well. But what your body truly needs is protein. So start with your next meal and focus on building a quarter of your plate as protein. The next thing that you can do to support your energy is to hydrate. If you had chemotherapy, then you would have received lots of IV hydration along with your chemotherapy. But now that your treatment's done, you need to focus on increasing your hydration. This can be any type of non-caffeinated or non-alcoholic beverage, flat water, sparkling water, flavored water, decaf tea. Whatever it is, start by increasing your hydration. Take a water bottle with you everywhere you go and be sure to have a full glass of water with every single meal. Okay, but on to the next thing that you need to know about radiation. Radiation is painless. Okay, now hear me out on this one because I do not mean that the effects of radiation are painless. That is certainly not true. But the radiation beam itself is actually painless. You don't feel it at all when treatment is happening. And that ties into number three. You can't see radiation. You actually won't be able to see the radiation beam when it comes in contact with your skin. So you basically won't feel it or see it, but you're going to notice the effects. That brings me to the fourth thing that you need to know about radiation and that is appointments are short. The average radiation session will take between 15 and 30 minutes. Most of your time will be spent getting prepared and set up for your treatment because you'll be going in for treatment every day from anywhere between one to six weeks. It's good to know that those appointments are not gonna take very long. You'll also be marked in a permanent or semi-permanent way to make sure that your radiation treatment targets the exact same area every time. You want to ensure that your treatment is received in the exact same area every single day so you're going to get permanent or semi-permanent markings on your body to make sure that you're lined up. Some clinics will use permanent tattooing. This is a small mark placed on your body. It kind of looks like a freckle. Or other centers will use a type of semi-permanent marker or henna ink. But the next very important thing you need to know about radiation is how to take care of your skin. You're going to want to use the ointments provided to you a lot. Your radiation team will suggest ointments or creams that are safe for you to use during your radiation treatment. These products will help protect your skin from damage. These products will help minimize the damage to your skin and help you with the side effects. You'll typically be started off with a non-medicated ointment. The most commonly recommended product 
is Aquaphor. This is a Vaseline-based ointment that is a fix-all for dried or cracked skin. It works to add a protective barrier to the skin, keeps the skin moist, but still allows oxygen to pass through. It has no fragrances, no preservatives, and no dyes, which is exactly what you need to look for in an ointment to use during radiation. Another option would be Eucerin Cream. This works in a very similar way to Aquaphor. Another option is Calendula Cream. This is a plant-based ointment that can be used during radiation. The oils from the Calendula flower, which is a type of marigold, is known for promoting skin healing. Some women really attribute this ointment to keeping their skin healthy during radiation treatment. The next ointment I've got to tell you about is Meoderm Cream. This is a combination of a water-based lotion and aloe gel. It's very soothing for irritated or burned skin. And that actually leads me to the last ointment that you need to know about for radiation treatment. And that's pure aloe gel. This is an obvious choice for women going through radiation treatment because it helps with skin irritation and burn healing. So picking one or two of these ointments to use during radiation treatment is a great place to start. But you do want to apply these non-medicated ointments a lot. Apply them as much as you can to keep the skin healthy and hydrated. This might mean sacrificing a shirt because it's going to get stained because of the amount of ointment and that's okay because you're going to be protecting your skin. If you find your skin is itchy, which can happen a lot during radiation treatment, then you may be prescribed a medicated cream, like a hydrocortisone cream. This type of cream helps relieve itchiness. You'll want to apply this cream first to get the maximum contact with your skin and then apply the non-medicated creams on top. But you also want to make sure that you do not use creams or ointments that are not approved by your care team. Some creams and ointments can actually make your skin more sensitive to radiation. They are sometimes called radio sensitizers. So before using a cream or an ointment, be sure to have it checked with your care team. It's often okay to use, but you don't wanna make matters worse by amplifying the side effects of radiation treatment. Okay, but what about the skin effects you often see with radiation treatment? Your skin may peel, either a moist peeling or a dry peeling. Now, moist peeling can look really serious, oozing and peeling, and you definitely wanna make sure to point this out to your care team. You can also experience redness in the radiation area. At first, it might just look like a slight tanning of the skin, but over time, it may progress to getting more red and angry looking. The radiated skin might also feel more tight and dry than your other skin. Now, to help prevent any type of skin irritation, you'll want to make sure you wear loose-fitting clothing. This will keep your skin dry and avoid any friction in the area. Women often experience issues where there's creases in their skin. Like for example, where your arm touches your chest wall or your armpit area or underneath your breast where your breast touches your abdomen or in your cleavage. If you can, keep your arm from touching the side of your body as much as possible and wear a loose fitting bra, preferably one without an underwire. These side effects are actually delayed. Side effects don't typically start until about two weeks into radiation. A lot of women mistakenly think that they're gonna be completely free of radiation side effects because they don't experience any symptoms in the first two weeks. And then radiation starts catching up with them. The changes in your skin color and exhaustion, they start to appear at around the two week mark. It's because the effects of radiation are actually delayed. This also means that the effects of radiation can also get worse after you finish radiation treatment. The exhaustion or the changes in your skin can actually get gradually worse after you finish your treatment and the weeks following. The side effects might actually get worse before they get better. So before you plan a big trip to finally celebrate being done treatment, you might wanna delay that departure date for about two weeks after you're done radiation. Now, understandably, a lot of women are eager to undergo reconstructive surgery so they can start to feel comfortable in their skin again. But this actually leads me to the next thing that you need to know about radiation treatment. Reconstructive surgery should be delayed six to 12 months after the end of radiation treatment. Because the effects of radiation are delayed, the changes in your skin are gonna be delayed as well. You wanna make sure that all the skin changes have taken place before you get your surgeries. This will make sure that incisions are not made and then the skin further tightens altering the final look of your surgical procedures. Okay, so now you understand all 12 things that you should know about radiation treatment. But like I mentioned, if you really want to increase your energy during radiation treatment, then you have got to focus on your nutrition. That's exactly why I'm linking up the next video here on the best diet for breast cancer survivors. Click the link here. I'll see you in the next video.